Hello, my name is Matthew Marquit and welcome to this video in the Unreal Engine 4 Basics tutorial series. In this particular video, I want to cover how to import assets that you've created into the Unreal Engine. So if you're kind of doing more of the art side of things, how do you bring your content in? So this is going to be more uh, keeping it simple. So it's just your basic like environment meshes, no crazy animations, none of that stuff. Um, so just simple bringing in both geometry and texture. So I have a little scene right here. Of course, I've got a Ghostbusters logo because we all know Ghostbusters are awesome. Um, but I've created this little scene, as we can see here. Oops, I'm kind of flying off into space. But this scene is made up of modular pieces, right? A whole bunch of decals. So things like this, as you can see, are just decals, these little rocks. Um, I have my snaps on, so that's what's going on there. Um, but you can zoom up on any of these. And so same thing, I got leaves, I've got a grate. All of these things are decals, the Ghostbusters, right? The dirt on the corner there, the dirt in the bottom, and so on, right? So this is just one of those methods, of course, of modular building. Now, theoretically speaking, since we're importing into Unreal, we don't need to do decals like this, okay? They do actually have a decal system, and I will show you guys that in a moment when we get into Unreal. Um, but for now, I'm just going to bring all this thing as in one piece, just because the concept of importing alpha textures, say like you're bringing in a plant that has alpha textures, that's not necessarily a decal. I still want to show you the process. So yeah, you'll do a little bit differently, but I'll still show you kind of how it all works. Okay, now, the first thing you need to do always, of course, is to understand what you need to do with your geometry before it's ready to go. Uh, in this case, uh, you want to make sure that your geometry is cleaned up. So you'd like say you welded your verse together, things like that. You also want to say if you're using Maya, you want to delete, whoops, and I go flying there, but you want to delete your history, okay, on your objects or in Max, you just delete the X form, which would be as simple as clicking on your objects. You select all of them at once. But just for purposes of showing this, I'm going to click on the gear here, um, not gear, the uh, the wrench. I'm going to click on Reset X Form and then Reset Selected. So now if I go back to my modified panel and see an X Form, I can just collapse that down and now it should reset like all of the parameters and the history of the object. Now, potentially even doing this will sometimes make it so that your objects looked a little bit messed up when you bring them into the engine. Uh, this actually happened with my trim the first time I was kind of covering this uh, as I was doing the demo and practice before the video and uh, this was inverted. And so what happened was I mirrored this and then there was some just the settings that remembered after I rotated it, it was just kind of backwards. So sometimes what you have to do is reverse the, the normal Normals or invert the normals before you bring it in if you're having that issue where that just it looks right but it's inverted um, that basically is as simple as in max just going into your modified panel coming down to where it says normal and using a normal modifier so right there and you'll flip the normals and then you can bring it in so if that's an issue uh, if it's not whatever good awesome uh, but just keep that in mind that if you bring in your geometry into some weird stuff that's one of the potential troubleshooting things you can do to fix it now one of the other things you need to do is you need to name all your materials which I have conveniently done that I'm going to hit M and open up the material editor here and you'll see oh, these are all the materials I'm using in the scene um, so I've named them so things like leaves underscore decal over here the graffiti underscore decal a uh, dirt decal so anything that was a decal but trim right this one's called pillar by naming them you just basically double click on the material and name it up over here uh, it doesn't that matter what you name them just as long as there is a name to them and because this when you import into unreal it's going to use these names to automatically name your materials so if you leave it in material 51 that's what it's going to be called when you bring it into unreal and it's going to get confusing about what is what especially if you're going in and trying to fix some of your content okay so we'll just shut that off but like i said name your materials uh then the next step is you want to make sure that your pivot points are in the right place so if you select an object sure you definitely want your pivots kind of in the middle or somewhere close to the object let's just say if it was somewhere flying off in no man's land you're going to want to make sure that your pivot is not doing that right so if i say let's see i grab the trim you see how the trim piece uh the pivot's kind of out here maybe i want it centered on the object you go up to your hierarchy panel over here click on effect pivot only and you can either move it manually if you want or just go like something like center to object and then there you go it's in the middle of the object okay now there's a couple of options too you have when bringing it into unreal and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment when we actually get into unreal but you can either bring these objects in independently or as one whole piece even though they're not one object okay and this is this can be done through unreal like i don't have to just like okay let me import the floor and then i'm going to import the wall separately because that's going to take a while um we're going to actually just import it as one big hole and you can do this and then you can separate it um at, at import time in unreal so i'll show you that when we get to that point in a second so once you've done all that stuff then you can export it so i'm going to hit Control a to select all deselecting that one 
uh, decal there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to export this by clicking up here on my Max button, going down to Export, and choosing Export Selected. I just have a habit of doing that in case there's other things in the scene I don't want. Um, then I'll click on the Wall FBX here because I've already made it. I'm just going to save over the existing one. I hit Save loud noise but basically saying do you want to save over it you won't get this if it doesn't exist but we'll save over it yes the only thing you want to make sure is under geometry turn on smoothing groups if you don't do this unreal uh, gives you a little error that says you know there aren't smoothing groups on the stuff so just make sure you turn smoothing groups on if you're using of course the fbx export that's really all you need to know simple and then we just hit okay and now we've got it saved out all right so now we don't need max anymore now we're just going to go into unreal so here's Unreal. Of course, you can open it up by going to the Epic's Game Launcher, clicking on that, launching up a window, bring up your projects, your new projects. I've already made a project, and here it is called Importing Assets. Um, but basically, all I did was go to New Project, clicked on First Person under Blueprint, made sure I had starter content. Then I named it down here and chose the location of where I wanted it and hit Create Project. So I'm not going to redo that for you guys, uh, but that brings up this, right? So now we have this scene going on here, and this scene is the uh, is basically the default uh, first person uh, scene that you'll get okay and so we clearly don't want this stuff I mean I guess I can just dump it in but what you would normally do if you're gonna create your own scene from scratch is you're just gonna hit control N or go up to the top here and go file new level and it'll give you three options be default VR basic or empty we want a skybox so we're gonna choose default okay and this basically gives us practically nothing we just have like a static mesh floor um, we have like a fog and a, a directional light and a player start. Now we don't really need the player start, so we can delete that. Um, we're just going to leave this mesh in here for now. Um, but uh, you would probably delete that and then you know create your own content. Uh, but you can leave these other two in because they make sense. Uh, actually, what you also want to do too is under lights, come over here and drag in a skylight. What skylight should do is make it so that you don't have any of these infinitely black shadows. Uh, so when you're bringing your art in and you're trying to, like, how come I can't see that one side? I need to put a light in. No, you can literally just do that. Um, but just be mindful that now that you've put these two lights in, so this one was in by automatically, but you've added the skylight here. Uh, this counts, obviously, as two lights, and these are infinite lights. So no matter where in the scene you are, they're calculating. Um, but be mindful that in Unreal, you can't have more than four lights interacting with each other. So we're already down by two. So that means when you like say, if I was to say right click, go over here and then do um, place actor and choose a spotlight, or not a spotlight, a point light, you see this attenuation on the light, right? That's the blue lines. You wanna make sure that if I was to duplicate this, right? Control W to duplicate. Um, if I was to have two of these, and now you'll see that their attenuations are intersecting with each other. If you were to put a fifth one in there, remember, because these two other lights already exist, one of these lights is gonna stop working automatically and it just chooses for you because Unreal can't calculate that. So you wanna make sure that you drop the attenuation Right here, they're all set to a thousand. But if I was to say set them down to 200 each, now they're obviously not interacting with each other. But you have to be mindful of, of course, how it affects the scene. So they can't be too small, but they can't be too big. So just be mindful of that. Uh, I just thought that was kind of an important thing to know. I'll repeat that in a different video um, when we talk about lighting. But I do want to make sure, of course, that you know this as you're importing uh, other lights in the scene automatically. So let's just, whoops, delete those, undo. We can come up here. I grab the sky sphere by mistake, and I won't just delete the two lights. All right. Awesome. So now that we have the scene ready to go, we've added our skylight. Let's do a little bit of organization. So under here in the content uh, browser where we want to bring in our, our content, um, this is the base content folder. And what I'm going to do is actually create my own folder. So we can call it whatever we want. I mean, I give you some suggestions like work files or imported assets. But we're going to right click over here, go to new folder, and I'm just going to type in work files. And it has to be one word when you're doing Unreal. Uh, Unreal doesn't like spaces. So here we go, work files. I'm going to click on that folder, go into that folder. And then in this folder, I'm going to create three more folders called geometry, textures, and materials. So we'll right click, new folder, right? So we'll do geometry, right? We'll right click. We'll add a new folder again, and we'll do textures, okay? And then lastly, we'll right-click new folder and do materials. So this is just for organization. As I said before, you're gonna import this content, and now it's easier to find stuff. When it's all mushed together, it's a little bit harder, so this will help us. So what we're gonna do is actually, I'm gonna go into the textures folder, because the textures folder is where I wanna import everything to begin with, and then I'll move things to the appropriate folders later. So what does that mean? How does that work? Well, all you have to do is you have two options. You can click on the import button and then locate your content. Um, or you can drag it into the content browser by opening up, say, here's my folder with all the content I have. I can drag in this wall FBX directly into the content browser and see that little plus, let go of it. And if I minimize this, 
or I can't minimize that right now with this object right here, but this will pop up your FBX import options. There's a couple things to note within this. Uh, right here where it says skeletal meshes, unless you have one, which in this case we clearly don't, you're gonna check that off and it'll change your options down here. So we're gonna change that. And now you'll see that there's an option down here. And by the way, if it is not expanded, this is the button you push to expand it to see these advanced options. Down here, there's the combined meshes. So this is what I mentioned before. If you want this to be all one piece instead of a bunch of separate objects, Unreal will break them into separate objects if you uncheck this. It will leave them all as one object if you keep it checked, okay? So just be mindful of that. Then the other thing to be mindful is down here where it says materials. If you want to import the materials and the textures that are associated with it, automatically have those checked. Otherwise, take them off. I do, so I'm just going to hit import. Now, if you had more than one object and you want the same settings for everything, you hit import also. It really doesn't matter which one we choose here because uh, I only have the one object. But here it goes. It's going to import. It's going to dump it all down here into the browser. We should see our thumbnails pop up in just a second. There they go. Okay. And, uh, and actually, just, just for reference, if you're wondering why there's two of some of these, uh, it's this weird bug that when you import from Max, and I have one image, um, like the main image is, is referencing the uh, color or the diffuse, and the other part of the image, the alpha channel, is on the opacity. It just basically says, oh, you have two different images, and it imports it in twice. So a little odd, but just be mindful of that. Um, anyways, so there is all of our content imported. Here's our geometry. So now if we want to move the content, I can come over here and show my folders again, and I can drag in different objects. If you, if you hover over the objects, you'll see it tell you what it is. So this says wall static mesh. I hover over the, any of these spheres, and these are your materials. So trim material. Hover over texture, and you'll see there you go, stone underscore pavers uh, texture, right? So this is our textures folder. So let's put the other stuff where it belongs. So if I drag geometry over here, it will say, do you want to copy it or move it? I want to move it. So we'll do that, and then all the materials. So I'll grab all of these materials, right? So anything, like I said, that's a sphere. These are alpha materials, so that's why they're kind of hard to see because uh, they're being alpha out slightly, but these are all the materials. So I can go in and grab all of the materials that make my scene. You can just see how many of them they're, I'm using just in that tiny little scene. And we can do the same thing. We can come over here to the materials folder, go like that, move here, and there you go. So now you have your organization. So here's my textures. Here's my materials and here's my geometry. So this just really helps out. Trust me, when your scene gets really big and massive, this is going to save you some time. Now, to be fair, of course, you could always just come up to the search section right here and set it uh, to, or set the filters right here to be just textures and just materials. But if you brought in the default content, which uh, I did, if I do this, I'll see not just the textures uh, that I have, but the textures uh, that are part of the other content too. Okay, so you want to make sure you're, you're higher up. I was kind of low in the stack, so I wasn't going to see anything. So if I go back to filters and then pick texture, there you go. So you'll see all those textures plus all the other content, which is why I said if you just organize it, you just go to your folder and that's where your content is. So whatever. So we'll take the filter off and we'll just have it right here. We'll go back to work files and so on. Okay, so that's up to you how you want to do it. Now, what you'll notice is if I actually go back uh, up to the work files here, geometry, and drag this in, it should automatically, I'm going to F up to zoom up on the object, should automatically have all the object together on a flying around, right? If you're having a hard time trying to focus on a small object in the scene, uh, make sure you go up here to the camera speed and change it to something lower. There, I got a two, and now I'll move a little bit slower. Okay, it's, it's Z fighting right there, so we'll just lift it up off the floor a little bit, and then we should be good. Now, you'll notice that all my alpha textures are broken. And remember, as I said before, you can do decals differently, and I will show that in just a moment. Um, but I, like I said, this would be the process. You would have to fix your uh, alpha textures um, anyways if you, say, brought in a tree. So I just brought them in anyways just to do that. So how do we fix them? Well, let's go to our work files, go to our materials folder. Let's say the Ghostbusters one here. Um, to go into material editor, we double-click. Here's the material editor for the object. Really, it's super simple. What it's doing here is the node, the texture sample node, is going from the RGB into opacity. We want the alpha channel because the way I made my alpha textures is the alpha channel of this texture is what is alphaing out the image. So we'll go from alpha to opacity. And now we'll come up here and hit apply. And now you should see in the scene, if I go back down here, it takes a second to load in, now it's fixed, right? And you can do that for all the other ones. Right, I mean, you get it. I don't have to go in and fix them all, um, but that's how it works. So you would fix all these other alpha ones by doing the same thing, right? By double clicking, coming in here, super simple, going from alpha to opacity instead, and then hitting apply, and you'll go and fix all of your alphas. Okay, so there you go. There's the um, the uh, graffiti on the wall there. All right, so like I said, won't do the rest of them, but you understand how that works. So let's scroll down here. We'll talk about the um, the other things that uh, I wanted to mention. So we've done that all the way up here, but the last 
thing, of course, after you've done that too. And also, if you want to put your advanced textures uh, on here. Now, let me do that first. I'll do the advanced texture. So I made in bit bitmap to material a whole set of advanced textures for this base platform here. Um, so the stone pavers. So I didn't import those yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go over to work files textures. I'm going to open up my folder here and they are up here. They're all called bitmap to material. So I'm going to grab the ones that I need. Um, I don't need the rest of these because I, even though I imported them, I'm not going to use them. So just the ones I need, which are these four. Okay. So we're going to apply an ambient inclusion of metallic and normal and roughness. So I'm going to drag those into textures. Okay. We've got to get the little plus, let go. I'll drag them in. So there they are. So now on this object, I click on the object. You'll come over here. You see the materials on the object. So I want to grab this one because that's that material. We'll open up the material editor. So we'll double click on this. Okay. And by default, the only thing on it, of course, is going to be your texture sample here. So let's just move that aside. And I'm actually going to move this over so we can kind of see what we're doing here for a second. Okay, so now how are we going to add the rest of these? I'm actually going to lift this up a little bit because we're going to need some space to put these other ones in. Okay, so with this, I'm actually going to drag in those four. So you have these four images that I want to use. So I'm going to drag them in right into my material editor and boom, boom, boom. They all pop in. Okay, so now what I can do with these, so with these different texture samples, so we can tell which one's which just by looking at them in some cases. But here is, whoops, I keep grabbing the nodes because it's overlapping. So let me see if I can, there we go. No, okay, never mind. I'm going to move this one first. And then we'll see right on the edge. There we go. All right, cool. So this, this, one's, uh, this one here is our roughness. So I can assign that to the roughness uh, and so on. But we'll see like, okay, let's start off with, and I'll zoom up on the object a little bit. Let's even slow our camera down just a little bit more. And we'll just zoom in just a bit so we can kind of see what's happening to the texture as it's getting updated. But So we'll attach the RGB of this to the normal. All right, so that is attached and we can just hit apply and you can see the update in here. So the normal should now add that depth to it. We can take this, which is our ambient inclusion, apply that to uh, uh, ambient inclusion down here. Okay, same thing, we can hit apply. Now you can do them all at once and then hit apply, but we can see the updates happening in real time. Um, now you've got uh, this being our metallic. So we'll come over here and set that to metallic. And then this last one here, so we'll do roughness and metallic at the same time. Uh, put those together and then hit apply over here in the corner and now our texture should be updated so that's how you apply all those advanced shaders um, and so on um, but if you want to like fix things like i noticed that sometimes my you know maybe my ambient inclusion was too dark uh, or was too light you can actually fix them in the editor if you do like things like blends or whatever um, so i can just come in here and uh, i can do a um, like a multiply or an addition so i can do like an addition uh, type in add up here we can drag in an addition uh, channel and what we can do is also do a constant three vector which is a color so we'll come over here and I'll type in constant and we'll grab a constant three vector so those three numbers make a color so we can double click in here and make this um, like a lighter I'll just start off with white but you can blend this into one channel this into the other channel right here and then you'll see that now it actually makes the whole thing white so um, if we're doing addition anyway. So if I don't want it to be completely white, but I'm trying to lighten it up a little bit, we'll pick a, like a darker, a darker gray or something like that. And I'll hit OK. Should update it unless we want to try and multiply here. I'm actually going to try black real fast. Let's try this black. Hit OK. OK. We want live previews and live nodes. By the way, I forgot to mention that. Make sure that you have live preview, live nodes, and live update on. And then, see, there you go. So I was wondering why it wasn't working. Um, that's why you want these things to update in real time to see the blend in the preview. If, you're, if you don't have the preview, you click on that little, uh, that little arrow. So there's our preview. So now if it's totally black and we're adding it, it actually does nothing to it. So um, let's go back and go like a layer gray. And then we hit OK. And now you see what's going on here. So now it's lightening up the whole thing. So let's just say my ambient occlusion was too dark. I can just fix it in here, right, by doing this, hit OK, and then come in and assign this to the ambient occlusion instead. So now if I apply that, it should lighten up all my shadows. But like I said, if it just happened to be that way, you can fix it. Now it looks too white, but you get the idea. So if you want to darken it, uh, instead of an addition, you do a multiply. So there's a multiply one. So let's just say it's too light and you want to darken it all. Do that, and then you can take a, a dark color down here and it can, it can fix it. So those there are actually ways of adjusting your materials without having to go back in Photoshop and changing things or whatever. But I just wanted to throw that quickly in there just in case somebody wanted to fix something without having to jump back into Photoshop or redo their textures and so on because this is actually a pretty quick fix if you know what you're doing, all right? But there you go. So there's how you can apply like all of your advanced materials that I asked you uh, to create um, for your content, right? So anyways, um, yeah, we'll just hit yes, we'll save it. 
There you go. So it's saved. Cool. And now our advanced material. Now, of course, we would do that for all our other objects. I didn't bring in or make the advanced materials for the other ones. This one's just for the demo. As we can see, they're working awesome. But like I said, the last thing I wanted to talk about really, uh, or actually, I guess there's two things. But the one major last thing I wanted to talk about, of course, is the decal. So remember, I said like we're using these as decals in Max. Um, they work like this in Unity if you're using the Unity game engine. But in Unreal, there's actually this thing called the deferred decal, which is really awesome. And let me show you how that works. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to my work files. I'm going to go to materials and we'll gra grab the Ghostbusters one. So we'll use him as a deferred decal. Okay, so we're going to double click and open them up. And this is how you make a deferred decal out of something. Okay, so this is fixed, right? Remember I fixed that. But over here on the side, we want to take a look at some of this information on the side. But we want to make sure that we're in the material. So select the material so that the, de the details over here are based on the material and not on, say, you can see how it changes over here. It's based on the texture. So let's go in the material. And then look over here and you'll see that there are different types of material domain. One of the options is deferred decal. So select that. If you want to do that, make sure that this is translucent, translucent for both your blend modes. Um, and you can see there's our decal already kind of hovering over. Now, it doesn't look right, of course, because it needs to be projected on a surface. So it is going to look a little off, but that's cool. We got it. We want it this way. We're just going to hit apply. And now I'll shut this off. The cool thing is if you have the decal selected. So let's just say I come over here and go to my, um, I go back to my work files, choose materials, and choose the decal, right? So with the decal selected, it will automatically, if I right click over here, and sorry if you hear my baby crying in the background, um, but uh, I'll right click over here and you'll see it automatically has deferred decal. So I don't even have to do any work. I can just click on this, boom, it's gonna throw it in and that is absolutely ginormous. So let's uh, come over here and increase the speed of the camera flying. All right, so that's giant, obviously, compared. So we're going to shrink that down. So the default size of the object is huge. So the decal might be big. You can go in and change it, change the size any way you need. But, of course, if you just scale it in, this is how the, it's actually just serves as a projector. So think about it like a projector. Like if I was just grab a projector and point it at something, it works like that. Anything in that green box is being projected. So if I put another object up here and it was floating over the ground, that would also project onto it. So you want to make sure that it's really thin. So when you're using your scale tool and you're scaling it down, make sure you scale it super thin, right? Something like this. So like, because the player's foot, if it runs over it, will also show up like that. So you want to be careful of how that works too. Okay. So, and I don't know what the heck I did with my entire scene here. It seemed to have disappeared. Um, but you'll see right here that with the decal, I have to hover it over the floor. So let me grab the move tool here. <clears throat> and uh, we'll hit F to zoom up. Whoops, we're under the floor here. I'm having a heck of a time here with my camera moving at four speed. So boom, boom, boom. And so if we hover it over the ground, there you go. So now you can see that wherever I move this, it will project, and it should project over everything. Um, as I said before, I don't know what the heck I did with my, with my scene. Um, but there you go. Once you, if you have it selected, it looks a little odd, but once you deselect it, you'll see it looks right. You can always select the decal by clicking over here or clicking over here uh, and on the world outliner and move it, and it literally projects on anything. So if I was to, say, bring in another object, so if I come over to geometry here and throw in a cone or something, I mean, it's completely irrelevant. If it's in that, well, <laughs> of course, don't have your material selected when you bring in a BSP or it automatically puts it on there. So let me have nothing selected. We'll try that again. Or I'll just do a cylinder, drop, drop that in there. So now, same thing. Any, anything I do with this, if I click on this decal and I project on it, right? And if I was to say rotate it, and we'll just do it over here. So I'll move it over here. I can have it on the wall instead of the floor by just rotating the decal by coming over here, selecting this. And then if I want... Like I said, just kind of rotate it up. So we'll rotate it 90 degrees this way, and then we'll rotate it 90 degrees this way. And then, of course, I just have to move it. So if we just move it in place, now it's on the wall. So this is actually really cool. So decals can be placed anywhere, and they can stretch over different surfaces and so on. So that's how decals work. All right, so let me undo, see if I can go all the way back and get my scene back again before I blew it up. There we go. So I replaced the entire scene with that one decal. don't know what happened there. Anyway, uh, but that's how you do a decal, and those are, like I said, really awesome uh, as far as, whoops, and I minimized the wrong one here. But the last thing I want to talk about is kind of like if you do have like a, a, a scene like this that you want to repeat over and over again, right, so you made it out of that, just make sure that your snaps are set, right, as you're moving things. Um, but if I hit, uh, you know, Control uh, w to duplicate something, so let's try that again. Control w boom. All right, so we can line it up that way too because as long as your snaps are on, 
things should move at the same space. So you see right here, I have my snaps on, I just snap another five units, bam, there it is, it's all one piece. So now I can set up my modular pieces and make up an entire scene out of that, right? Duplicate both of these at the same time and move them and so on. So just make sure you work with your snaps. Don't shut off your snaps, otherwise you have a hard time lining things up. So it's up to you whether you wanna kind of make your scene in Max or Maya first imported in, or of course make your scene uh, in Unreal, that is totally up to you. Uh, but make sure that you use snaps if you're going to do that. So anyways, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover on the art aspect of how things work um, within importing assets into Unreal. So hopefully this helped you, and I will see you guys in the next one.